A man is a wolf rather than a man to another man when he hasn't yet found out what he's like. Plautus, asinaria. Hello, let's continue with our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. Now we meet the first of the chapter's two fellow travelers. A man walks on foot, urgently prodding a mule that is carrying weapons used by infantry, whipping with a stick a male mule which came loaded with lances and halberds. Don Quixote tells him to slow down and join them, but the man is in a hurry. He makes two interesting comments. First, he implies that war is imminent. The arms you see me carrying here are to be used tomorrow. Second, he says that if they will stay at a nearby inn instead of the hermitage, he will tell them about wondrous events. I'll recount marvelous things to you. That's enough for Don Quixote, who orders that they head for the inn. Before arriving at the inn, Cervantes satirizes the hermitage. The cousin wants to stop and have a drink. The hermit is absent, but they are greeted by a sub-hermit, which means the lay sister, while also hinting that she is the hermit's lover. The travelers ask for expensive wine, but she only offers them cheap water. The interlude is short on details, but disillusionment about religion predominates. Everything sacred about the hermitage turns out to be spoiled, and by contrast, Sancho recalls nostalgically the abundance of Camacho's wedding and Miranda's house. Did you know? Toward the end of the 16th century and the beginning of the 17th, Spain was involved in multiple wars across Europe, with countries like Turkey, England, France, Portugal, the Low Countries, and Germany. On the way to the end, we meet the chapter's second fellow traveler. He also represents war. In fact, a young man, a page, going off to war. He carries a sword over his shoulder with a bundle tied to it. He is also singing a seguidilla, a popular lyric of the day. And curiously, the narrator tells us that the cousin committed it to memory. The powerful message requires no interpretation. Off to war, I've been taken by my wants and needs. If I had any money, I would not go indeed. From the young man's conversation with our travelers, we learn that he has enlisted in a company of infantry, which will soon depart from the port city of Cartagena in Murcia. He does this because he's desperately poor, and although he tried to serve several masters at court, he was never admitted into a household. The page's story signals the life of a failed picaro. It's one of Cervantes' tightest portraits of human exploitation and courtly corruption. The page also alludes to the immoral hermitage we have just visited by comparing his fate to that of being thrown out of a religious order. Like someone who leaves a religious order before taking his vows and they take away his habit and give him back his clothes, just so my masters returned to me my clothes for having finished with their business at court, they went home and took back the regalia which they had only given to maintain appearances. This is important. The behavior of the corrupt courtesans is opposite the liberal magnanimous ideal that Cervantes so often advocates, such as in the portrait of Miranda. Don Quixote's disgust at the page's treatment underscores this criticism. What stinginess, he says. Quixotic Mission Why is the page who walks on foot going to war? A. He is a violent man. B. He loves his country. C. He has no money. Correct answer, C. He has no money. There are five important aspects to the conclusion of this chapter. First, after Don Quixote sympathizes with the page's fate and criticizes the courtly extravagance that fails to create durable employment for such young men, ironically, he still cannot resist praising the soldier's life. There is nothing so honorable and useful on earth as serving God first and then one's king and natural lord, especially in the exercise of arms. Second, Don Quixote tells the page not to fear death, citing Julius Caesar. 
They asked Julius Caesar, that valiant Roman emperor, which was the best death, and he responded the unexpected one, the sudden and the unforeseen. Third, as Cervantes does in the prologue of part two, Don Quixote cites Terence regarding his preference for death over retreat. The soldier is more esteemed when killed in battle than when alive and safe in flight. Fourth, Don Quixote laments the fate of old soldiers who are forgotten, comparing them to old manumitted black African slaves. It is not right to deal with them like those who routinely cut their expenses and give freedom to their blacks when they are old and can no longer serve, and throwing them out of their house as technically free. Instead, they make them slaves to hunger from which only death can liberate them. And fifth, for the first time, Don Quixote acknowledges the existence of an inn instead of a castle. Both the narrator and Sancho note this. They arrived at the inn at dusk and not without Sancho taking delight upon seeing that his master judged it to be a real inn and not a castle, as he usually did. That's all for now. Keep reading. The story only gets better in the coming chapters. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza.